It's right here. That's what, that's the excitement. Why did, you know, what did MicroStrategy do? Well, first we bought some, and then we offered to buy out all of our shareholders that didn't like the idea. So then we bought out some of them and we took the excess in a tender offer. And then we, then we bought some more and then it went up and then we made like $300 million on it. So then it almost doubled and then we bought some more. And then we, now we have like 800 million or 850 million, something like that worth of it. And then we went to the marketplace and we raised a convertible uh, debt offering last week. We raised $650 million to buy some more, you know? And why do we buy it? Because we wanted to, we wanted to borrow in a currency which is debasing in value and invest in something which is appreciating in value. Because isn't that what you're supposed to do in business? Yes, dude, you are a savage. I love it. I'm so like, I'm just hey everybody. Welcome to my channel. Hope you guys are all doing well today. In this video, we're going to be talking about the following topics. Before we get into this video, I'm going to share with you guys a few moves I made earlier this year. After we had that March liquidity event and across the board, we saw all assets take major hits. When I figured out what the central bank was going to do and how fast the administration was working, I decided to take out a very large loan. And given the environment, I was getting very good offers left and right. My thought process was almost exactly the same as sailors. Most financial gurus and advisors out there will uniformly tell you not to take on debt. In fact, they'll tell you to do the exact opposite. But I figured that since they're debasing the money supply, the better move in this setting would be to take on debt and buy scarce and highly desirable assets. And I've even taken it a step further by collateralizing some of my crypto gains. And if you're interested in learning about that strategy, I'd recommend watching one of my past videos on Nexo. I'll include a link in the description box below. I typically only disclose my real time moves to my patrons in my private discord channel. However, I also have public discord channels where I'm very actively engaged with my community. I share my thoughts, market trajectory, tokens I'm interested in, projects I'm interested in, what kind of themes will dominate future rallies, and occasionally important industry updates. But if Discord isn't your thing, then consider giving me a follow on Twitter. Both link to my public Discord channel and my Twitter profile can be found in the description below. With the intro out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into this video. All right, to get this video started, let's go ahead and talk about the new advocates for Bitcoin and where all this new money is coming from. Investors who bought at least 1,000 Bitcoins worth roughly $20 million at Friday's price and have had an account open for less than a year drove significant demand since September, according to data from Chain Analysis. And in the past three months, this new cohort bought $11.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. So this group of people are new. They're people that didn't participate in the last rally that we had back in 2017 to 2018. And unlike the previous cycle, most of the money is coming from large investors. The demand is being driven by North American investors on feed exchanges with greater demand from institutional buyers. Despite the rise of Asia as a whole, most of the wealth is in the West. So it's no surprise that they're driving most of the demand. Assuming that I'm right in my outlook and Bitcoin eventually becomes the global reserve, I think these other countries should just turn on their printing presses, relax their crypto laws, and encourage all institutional and retail investors to plow fiat into crypto. I think any country that adopts a comparable strategy will easily leapfrog other nations as Bitcoin's adoption accelerates. And in this cycle, we have the likes of Stanley Drunkenmiller and Paul Tudor Jones, who both have skin in the game and have openly advocated for getting exposure to Bitcoin. Meanwhile, Square, MicroStrategy, MassMutual have all used their balance sheets to buy cryptocurrency. My guess is that a lot of these influential people already had Bitcoin in their private accounts. Now that they've loaded up, they're encouraging their funds, their companies to also buy Bitcoin. And the director at Grayscale Investments said that we are seeing institutional capital flowing in at the fastest pace in history of our business. And it is being deployed by some of the world's largest institutions and some of the most famous investors. And to put that into context, the flows into Grayscale's publicly traded Bitcoin trust have increased roughly 6x from a year ago. And you know, some folks are suggesting that we're probably going to have a pullback once Steve Mnuchin and his gang announce 
this new crypto regulation regarding self-hosted crypto wallets, which will require financial institutions to verify identities of recipients and senders for transactions involving self-hosted wallets that are not provided by a financial institution or service. But my guess is that now that we have this huge spotlight on Bitcoin, and there's a lot of eager buyers waiting on the sideline, and any dip that we have is going to be aggressively bought out. And I think once these guys have bought Bitcoin and Bitcoin produces a nice return, they're going to inevitably start exploring other opportunities in the digital asset space. Next up, Compound Integrated DeFi Earn goes live on Crypto.com. I've been saying this for months. I said this before the whole DeFi mania started. When things got a little bit contentious between CFI and DeFi, I was telling my audience that you're gonna see a merging of the two. Right now, hands down, more capital, more users are on CFI. And that's because a DeFi is a little bit complicated for people, it's more risky. And being a DeFi farmer myself, so I know firsthand how cumbersome the whole process can be. And unlike CFI, you can't just deposit your funds into DeFi protocols and just let it sit there if you're a farmer. You gotta really keep up with all the new developments and updates if you're looking to mitigate any potential losses and maximize all the value that you can extract from these farming opportunities. Knowing all that, I said that the next natural evolution will be CFI platforms integrating DeFi protocols that have been battle tested and have proven to be safe over time. And if you think about it, it's a win-win-win for everybody that's involved. Once a DeFi protocol has established itself and it gets integrated into a CFI platform, it's gonna be exposed to a huge audience. And assuming that the CFI platform has a good history of only integrating solid DeFi protocols, you can expect any DeFi protocol that gets integrated to get a huge flood of liquidity. And this is great for the CFI platform because by being a bridge, they can take a piece of the action. And obviously this is good for the users who normally wouldn't be able to interact with these DeFi protocols and get the fat yields. But now with this CFI DeFi collaboration, they're able to access a very lucrative yield mining opportunity. Yield farmers can now log into crypto.com and stake collateral across several farms to earn interest and support DeFi movement. Users can now grow their portfolio using new decentralized financial offerings and earn passive income without losing control over their crypto. Moreover, the DeFi Earn allows users to access such applications in a simple, safe manner minus the associated hassles. But for this convenience, Crypto.com will charge a 0.5 service fee on the corresponding earnings for each withdrawal. And the integration with the Compound Lending Protocol, it gives users easy access to nine DeFi tokens. And folks, this is just the beginning. I mean, you're seeing Crypto.com sort of take the lead amongst the CFI platforms, but you can expect other CFI platforms to eventually follow. And when they inevitably do, we're gonna see a huge flood of liquidity pour into the whole DeFi ecosystem. This is why my personal portfolio is heavily allocated to CFI and DeFi tokens. I know some people are thinking that it's just a phase, it's just a mania, that it's gonna come and go. I obviously disagree with that. I think certain DeFi protocols are going to become core infrastructure pieces in this new financial ecosystem that's being created. And to further drive home the point that I'm trying to make about CFI integrating DeFi protocols, let's take a look at what the Compound Finance founder has to say about CFI embracing DeFi. Founder of Compound Finance says that CFI will inevitably embrace DeFi and there are signs that it's already occurring. He further states that lines will blur and centralized finance and business will start to use DeFi to power the back end in order to improve user experiences. So in other words, everybody that's using these CFI DeFi platforms will eventually have access to the services offered by DeFi protocols, but most likely the respective user bases of these DeFi platforms, they'll be oblivious to all this. All they'll notice is that they have access to a new service they didn't have access to before. For example, I could see many of these CFI platforms integrating the DoorChain protocol on their backend. And the arrangement would look something like this. The CFI platform integrates the protocol, they embed an affiliate fee, this way, their users can trade between various assets cross-chain. The CFI platform with the affiliate fee 
gets to generate profit for themselves, which in my view is reasonable. They expended resources to attract a user base and they worked really hard to make that user base sticky. Plus they're exhausting resources to integrate that protocol and also to maintain the infrastructure. So I feel like they're entitled to a piece of the action. And the DeFi protocol in this case being DoorChain well, they'll get a huge flood of liquidity and they'll also get a lot of people utilizing the protocol. So again, to summarize that, the users get a new service, the C5 platform gets a new revenue source, plus they get to offer a new service to their user base without expending too much of their own resources. And lastly, the DeFi protocol gets a lot of exposure and potentially will end up with a lot more liquidity after its C5 integration. All right, the token of the week is swing by. As many of you guys may know, I'm a big fan of the Thorchain project and what they're about to do for the DeFi space. And SwingBuy is using a model that's very similar to Thorchain when it comes to swapping tokens from different blockchains. Unlike Thorchain, their model is a little bit more nuanced. Despite using TSS for executing trades, they're going to use a proof of network model for each bridge that exists in the network. And because I think Thorchain is going to get a lot of attention in the coming months because they're integrating Bitcoin, Ethereum, there's multiple other projects that are building bridges to Thorchain. Once this knowledge disseminates in the crypto community and there's more awareness, we're likely to see this huge spotlight on the project and projects that are doing similar things like SwingBuy are likely to benefit from this. They recently announced a 10% token burn and in 10 days their Chaos Mainnet is launching. Mainnet launches have been very positive price catalysts for token prices. And if you look at the current price after peaking out at 60 cents, it went back down to its ICO price of 2 cents and since hitting two cents, it's actually gone up by a factor of seven. So I went ahead and got some exposure, not because I believe in the project long-term. I think there's a good chance as we head into this next cycle, automated market makers in general are gonna get a lot of attention. And we're probably gonna see something like we saw with Oracles back in the summer. Once Link pumped, every other Oracle play out there pumped soon afterwards. So I think people who think they've missed out on massive gains with DoorChain, Sushi, uni they'll be exploring the space for other opportunities to make massive returns and i have a feeling that's going to lead them to projects like swing by i told my patrons a few days ago i was making this move and i'm already up 40 percent if any of you guys out there have any interest in hearing my real-time market insights moves that i'm making you guys should definitely consider checking out my patreon page and all the services that i offer and even if you guys join the lower tier of 20 dollars not only are you going to get access to my private discord channel but but you'll also get the paid version of my newsletter if you guys see any value in the services i offer through my patreon i encourage you guys to click the link in the description below to check out my patreon page with that being said this is crypto one step signing out i'll talk to you folks next time bye